see how these lines look over here. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Squad Ops operation. We're running Operation Rawhide. We're about to jump straight into the Operation Briefing here. And uh, we'll listen in what the U.S. has planned. And we'll talk more about what this operation is. But it's essentially a U.S. versus insurgent operation where U.S. has to assault the village and remove a jammer fob. So we'll listen to the U.S. plan right here and we'll uh, talk more. We, the imperialist Americans, we are going to be crushing the terrible INS forces who have been destroying our radio communications on the south side of the airfield here. We expect that they're somewhere in village, and we're going to be trying to take that out. So we get two choices today. We can either choose mechanized or infantry. We have chosen infantry. What that means is we get four additional GLs, and we also get a mortar cop. So the first thing we are going to do, we are going to mount up in the vehicles. They've already been distributed amongst your squads. Squad one is going to be our vehicle squad. They are going to take the two front MRAPs. We are going to line up and everything else, as, uh, as your squad leads have already been briefed, and we are going to maneuver down to the VCP that is in F677. We are going to maneuver the MRAP south, get cover, and we are going to pick up the other MRAP. After we pick up that other MRAP, we are going to maneuver to the mosque area. Around the mosque area, we are going to set up a friendly fob on the friendly fob marker, and we are going to set up mortars on that location. The rest of you guys are going to be pushing off besides the people who are going to be setting that up and we are going to be staging at the gas station area where I've marked it with an enemy BTR mark. After we stage up there we are going to be maneuvering and assaulting village from the southeast and the south. Squad 3 as well as the remnants from squad 2 are going to be assaulting from a southeasterly direction where you can see the attack marker there. So, oh wait, that's the wrong marker, my bad. Machine gun marker, that's what I wanted. All right, where you can see that machine gun marker right there. So you're going to be assaulting from that southeasterly direction. Watch those compounds. Make sure they get clear as you maneuver yourself on village. Squad 4, as well as some of the remnants from Squad uh, 1 that were attached over to Squad 4, are going to be assaulting from a southerly direction using the transport trucks to get themselves into position. The MRAPs will be sitting back and providing cover fire from the south and southeast. They'll be picking off people in the village. Once the push starts, we will have mortars raining down on top of the village as well as the surrounding area to keep their heads down. And we will just be doing a direct assault from the south and southeast with those squads. Does anybody have any correction or er, uh, question? Yeah. Uh, What's up, Ross? Are we going to expect any contact when we take the second or third MRAP? It's possible. They could push and do that. They uh, they have the ability to get there. That's why we are going to be pushing the two MRAPs from Squad 1 south of the VCP in order to provide cover in case they do engage us. If they do engage us, we are going to have the other squads dismount, engage that contact, and then we will remount whenever they are dealt with. The MRAPs should be able to take care of us, though, if they just try to push light contact towards us at the VCP. Safety shovel. Oh, I have another question. Do they have any mines? Uh, they do have mines, yes. We will need to be careful for mines. That being said, we are going to be using the vehicles mostly off-road. They should not be able to make it up to the bridge that we're going to use to cross to get to the VCP in time. Uh, if they do, we're just going to check it beforehand. It's going to be real quick, but the MRAP should be able to uh, successfully get across there without any issues. Uh, for the MRAPs, go to the bathroom, guy. For the MRAPs, make sure that they, uh, they push across the bridge first and uh, get contact as quick as you can. Uh, if there's going to be any, so don't the MRAPs don't have to wait for us. It looks like they have hats as well, so that's something to keep in mind. Yep. That's why we are going to be keeping the MRAPs at far range as much as we can. They are going to be on the lookout for technicals. Just listen to your SL. Google is experienced with vehicles. He will do well in commanding you. And if you get hatted, you I have like a half a second to hop out. So. Yeah, do that. And not in the end. So wrap. the other thing about hats is their no, drop off is so ridiculous. Oh, if dude. we keep these guys at range, they're not oh, going to be able to hit it reasonably. Right. Anybody have any other questions? All right, squad leads, let's break them out. Hunt dog. All right, let's go. 
All right, as you can see here, uh, the U.S. is planning to take their armored convoy down, get the additional vehicle at the checkpoint, push in the mosque, and then proceed east to west as a platoon. It's going to be really interesting to see uh, how this plan works out for them. Uh, once again, this is Squad Operation Rawhide, uh, brought to you by SquadOps.gg. It's a one-life squad event uh, where you can learn more at SquadOps.gg. Watch us on YouTube.com slash SquadOps and Twitch.tv slash SquadOps. Right, My name is Karmacut. I'm the founder and director here at SquadOps. I'm joined by one of our commentators, Tedish. Tedish, say hello. How's it going, everybody? Yeah. Welcome and to the we're event. Sitting, yeah, welcome to the Thanks. event. And we're sitting here with uh, Penn, the man behind the scenes, the man with the magic. Uh, he helps mix all the multicam and perspectives together with the picture in picture and all that cool stuff. So, big shout out to Penn as he helps us run the stream. Uh, tonight, we're going to be running Operation Rawhide, which is a US versus INS uh, assault. As you can see here, US is staging their vehicles. Uh, as we take a look at the squad leaders, um, we have Google Trex squad leading one for US. Best Pony for two, Nacho for three, X-Bit for four, and commanding for the U.S. for round one is CMYK Matter. On the enemy team, we have Hamley squad leading for squad one insurgents. Squad two insurgents is led by server error. Squad three insurgents is led by Hitchens. And squad four by uh, Pure Paradise with Shadow Ritual commanding over the uh, insurgents this round. Looks like we're going to be live in just over a minute here. Yep, yep. This is a brand new operation. We're about to roll out a cool little overlay here that has all the assets for this operation. As you can see here, you can see all the assets from the vehicles and uh, weapons that both teams get to use. Uh, this was made by our amazing content creation team. And uh, yeah, as you can see, the U.S. gets quite a few vehicles. Uh, they do have options if they want to choose to go mechanized or infantry. But uh, it looks like that these uh, this this team is opting for the infantry uh, selection, which comes with two lodges instead of two strikers. Uh, on the second page here, you can see the objective. The uh, insurgents have placed a jammer fob in the village at the south of the airfield, and the U.S. needs to find and disable the jammer so that air operations can continue as normal. <clears throat> so yeah, this is a brand new operation created by Xbit. We're rolling it out for the first time officially today. Uh, Tedish, what do you think of this operation? I mean, it seems like it's pretty straightforward, but I think there can be a lot of nuance into it. I know that uh, you can, the U.S. has the option of throwing down a fob and then getting some mortars involved in the situation. And I do really like the new, how we kind of have the, I don't know what you want to call it, where the command picks. The choices, the, yeah. The choices of the loadouts. And it looks like we're live. Um, yeah. yeah, we'll see how it goes. It's going to be really interesting. Yeah, very interesting. This is, uh, we're trying to make our operations a little more dynamic. And uh, by giving commanders a choice of asset selection, we can kind of, allow them to make operations even more unique than they previously were with the custom selection of kits and vehicles. U.S. Infantry and the Mechanized Platoon is now moving out right now. Uh, they're taking two times MRAPs with uh, Logies and Trans Vehicles. Um, and they're going to be I proceeding did. down to the vehicle checkpoint yeah. to pick up an additional lead. MRAP for their use. Remember, gonna so it's going to be interesting to see uh, how they're going to utilize these infantry assets. Because they chose the Infantry Platoon loadout, so, yeah. they do get four extra grenade launchers, and one forward observer to help with the mortars. If they had opted for the mechanized infantry route, they would have been able to take two times strikers, but they would not have gotten those additional grenade launchers. Yeah, it's an interesting choice, because the strikers on this map can be really effective on the outside. Once you get in straight into the action and the tight turns of that village, it's going to be you know, with the potential of hats and all the lats and mines and IEDs out there. I get two, how many uh, scout kits did the insurgent get first? Is it I believe they get one yeah. scout per squad, um, but yeah, it looks like U.S. has reached this forward vehicle checkpoint without any difficulty. They're going to be taking this uh, MRAP and commanding it. Um, they're coming to a platoon hold right now. Uh, as you talked about earlier, strikers on this map extremely effective, simply because as we can see, there is very little terrain that blocks line of sight out here in the desert. We have the city itself that is pretty, uh, that is pretty thick with buildings and uh, windows, but as of as of right now, where the U.S. platoon is in the open, strikers and crow systems have a huge advantage. Uh, we're going to roll over and show you one of our uh, assets, yeah, which is the to, MRAP asset here. This is uh, We have three of these right now for the U.S. They did not opt for the strikers. Uh, so as you can see on my screen, this is the MRAP, and you can see a couple of the stats uh, about this. It's, a, it's essentially a sort of beefed-up Humvee. Uh, it's got similar stats to the Humvee, but it's got a higher elevation for the turret, 
Uh, that does comes in the crows and open top configuration. Okay. Looks like we might actually have some contact here. We got a couple technicals coming out to the southeast of uh, the American convoy here. I'd be surprised if they can't see him yet. No one's exchanged fire yet. Let's see if we can get down. Yep, okay. Oh. They, they found him. They got an SPG techie over here and a dishka. Oh, one down, two down. SPG goes oh, off. Oh, SPG tags one of the MRAPs. Second and this convoy cannot stop. This is an important part of uh, oh, getting hit from both sides. Of an ambush. You cannot stop when you are in a kill zone, and that is exactly what... uh. What's going on here? You need to be able to push through. Right now, U.S. Platoon is caught out in the open, and they've come to a platoon hold to return fire. But I don't know if this is going to be the right call. What they need to be doing is pushing further down this MSR and getting out of the open. They will be able to uh, to push back these uh, technicals on the left and right with overwhelming power. But uh, momentum has been broken here for the U.S., and that's going to allow the uh, insurgents a lot of time to build up and reorganize their defense. The, the, uh, you need to remember that you don't have to fight every every battle that you are given. You do have the pushing option of direct. pushing through to a more defensible yeah, location and direct. ensuring that you're allowed to uh, Don't get yeah, here we go. Get, uh, secure a new position. This MRAP decrewed. Second MRAP on the left, we're, taking we're RPGs, one MRAP takes down. one RPG and is we're now on down. fire. I'm not sure. Vehicle on the right exploding. This convoy caught out in the open, yeah, all momentum halted, down. and they are now down. Yeah, full back. retreat. <laughs> All right, uh, the house, move back to the mob. That SPG went right over their heads. Yeah. We talk about this a, a lot, especially on uh, Operation Silent Vigil, where momentum is important. You cannot stop in the open. You need to keep pushing until you can reach a defensible position. And uh, you really saw how U.S. got shook up. They uh, stopped in the open, and now two MRAPs are down. Infantry has taken quite a few casualties, and now there is no armor to protect this uh, this logistical and transport uh, convoy. They're coming around on that SPG. The SPG is about to see the whole convoy. SPG this is incredibly moving. dangerous now. These vehicles without any armor support. And split from the rest of the uh, SPG reloading squads over there. He's turning. Oh! Logic gets, gets tagged once. Driver abandons the vehicle. Yep, yep. Oh! Hey, it's a fence. We'll dismount. Dismounting all the infantry. SPG's bugging out wisely. That thing is hard to reload in the open. You're gonna get. Yeah. Taken out, and they got some light infantry contact over here behind these uh, silos. Yeah, as you as you know, it's incredibly important to uh, hit and run when you're playing as insurgents. You cannot really win straight up engagements. However, the U.S. were caught in a really bad position, and the decision to hold the convoy in the open was oh. not ideal. RPG hits the trans truck. A couple casualties go down. There's a couple infantrymen from the insurgents here, and it's gonna be. Uh, this is a bad way to start an operation right here. We have multiple casualties for the US 10 down 11 down for the US, but nine down for the insurgents. So uh, the US actually doing an okay job uh, Firing back and engaging the US forces rocket tech already engaging the uh, yeah engaging the silos These are relatively close for rapid uh, Adjustments there was no spotting or pre-spotting on the Fire mission, and that was incredibly right, accurate for a uh, instant fire. Yeah, I really feel like this. The, the there was a plan, and it sure didn't survive contact with the enemy. This is uh, a total, for lack of a better word, a kind of a shit show right now. Yeah. Stopping. I'd have to say stopping in the open was was pretty devastating to U.S. forces right there. It broke all momentum, shat, uh, shook them up, strategy got broken down, and allowed the insurgents to use a lot of their initiative, a lot of their momentum, to get in the right place at the right time. And then uh, U.S. was not able to reach where they wanted to get to fast enough. SPT truck in the center of the town here, or is, uh, excuse me, that's the uh, rocket techie. Yeah, it looks like the U.S. still have two MRAPs up. Rocket art, rocket art. There you go. They're opening fire on that rocket hey, techie. Rocket techie, techie, go down. Rocket techie down. Hold fire, hold fire. Rocket techie down. down. B 
But yeah, total casualty count right now comes to 13 for the U.S. and 9 for the insurgents. So while that ambush was quite effective, insurgents took a good amount of casualties. While tacky, straight ahead. They were out. able to disable one of the... Uh, SPG tacky down. One of the MRAPs, this second MRAP, dangerously low. I can imagine only if you if you were to just sneeze on it, it would explode. Um, it must have taken so much damage. But uh, U.S. now have it has some kind of uh, stabilization and uh, security within the town. They don't really have to worry about ambushes on the open road anymore. But I gotta say, man, stopping that convoy in the open on that highway was not was not the right uh, call. I don't think. I don't think anyone was ready for that. And what I'm noticing up here, kind of in the northwest of all the action, is I believe we have some scouts with a V-bit up here on this motorbike. We'll see if that comes into play later. They're looking for any target. Oh, and a, is that just a lat kit or a hat kit? That's a lat kit. Okay. So we'll see how There's a lone rocketeer over here harassing the uh, Humvees, or excuse me, the MRAPs, but I don't think he's going to be able to... Uh, engage too much. I think he's out of rockets and he's gonna be pulling out of the town now. We're gonna fly over and see, uh, now that US has control over the majority of the town, we're gonna fly over and see what the insurgents are up to on their defense. Alright, so we're over here with the insurgents now. Uh, they've put placed their fob down and that is going to be in the sa southern building. We can see uh, initial Initial uh, sandbags, dishkas, and the insurgents are spreading out now. A very sparse defense here. Not too much. Uh... Actually, look at this. We have two technicals here. Um, so there are quite a few of HMG assets left for the insurgents to defend the point from. Um, but so much wide open space around it. Those can be very effective. Yeah, it's going to be incredibly challenging for us to take this point. One thing that we do need to note is that the U.S. do get mortars for their assault, so they will be able to soften up the area. Maybe we can take out the technicals and that's uh, that stationary disco with the mortars before they push it out. But I know that was their plan. I was listening in before the game. Uh, Best Pony was talking about putting a mortar pit up on top of a building, and they were really talking about raining hell down before they get in there so that's why they pushed into the city over here um to try to get a, a secure mortar base cost them a lot but we'll see if it's effective down the, down the run yeah i'm not sure about this call i mean looking at the uh, map there's plenty of other isolated places where you could place a uh, mortar fob putting pushing into the city with all these windows and insurgents inside the town already is a dangerous move it's a bold move trying to take this city when you really don't need to the objective is that village so this is a very uh bold strategy and and i guess we're gonna see if it works out right now it looks like insurgents have conceded control of the city but if there were just a squad or two in these windows sparsely spread out they could cause ambushes and mayhem in all of these alleys and it would be devastating i think uh, a safer choice might have been to put the the uh mortars in the vehicle checkpoint with the prefab fob i think that's a rather safe location to place it but we'll see uh, how they proceed from here I think they might have been expecting if they pushed, if they, you know, bum rush straight south, you got only a couple bridges to cross. Those are going to be mines, ID'd, easily covered. So they're thinking, if you're, if you're supposed to defend the village, you know, most of your forces are going to be around the village. They're not going to really have anyone in the city. I would agree with that call. It, it might be a little bit risky, but I don't think it's quite as dangerous based right, on the, the objective and where here. the objective is. Go ahead and push ahead. Chappy. But then again, that's totally up to the Get commanders to the and uh, and how they call it. Looks like they are sweeping it is, the mines. Right, this western road is clear of mines up to gas station. Or up to where we're at currently. Hey, firm. All right, let's start pushing the trans. Two MRAPs are that's... sweeping west. They might get uh, V1. The lead one is the healthy one. Are there any mines on the field, or is it just IEDs at this point? Good. I do believe there's one IED on that bike, and that's it. Silas out here on a bike. Right, He's just intense, floating guys. around. Driver's out. Let's pull secure. Oh, yep. Here comes the bike. Pretty close. I wonder if he knows that those MRAPs are just north of him. He's in the gas station You can right see now. Uh, Insurgent Lodgy as well passing on that south. Anybody has a medic in 
parking in a garage, being responsible with his vehicle. Let's see, what is he? Looks like he's just a, just a rifleman, sent out here to scout. Got his AK. Ooh, if he looks out the right window, he could definitely get eyes on those MRAPs, maybe pop off a, a headshot here. MRAP's moving out. Oh, now he's got infantry. He's got a bunch of infantry wide open. He could definitely cause some mayhem right here. Pop up a couple shots, maybe kill I one. I think this goes. is the issue with the city. There are too many buildings. It's too time consuming to check every building. The 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 main city is just a large, large trap. Uh, when you can secure at distance with your uh, MRAPs and secure a, a mortar position outside of the city, uh, pushing into the city is extremely dangerous just because of all the windows. You can't really catch all of these windows. And, and this one soldier, Silas, might be able to cause a good amount of casualties before they can even lock down what windows he's in. If he looked right, he could take four in the open right now. Here we go. Oh, come on. Oh, buddy. Cause some havoc. Come on, Silas, you can do it. Yeah, there we go. Oh, MRAP I don't know just what blew up off. there. From what? Yeah, I think that's Google. No, Google wasn't very Google. Were you in that? Yes, he was. Do we know why that blew up? I'm not right. sure why that blew up. It just. One, have the rest of your guys move back. It just kind of blew up. Uh, Chappy, have the rest of your guys move back with the rest of the convoy. Yeah, it looks like Google bit it. I've and never it's... seen that happen yeah, before. It wasn't on fire or anything. Maybe it was one of those. But that ones. was the. Oh, oh! I think oh. a single HMG shot. Wow. The, the the dead Humvee, or because that Humvee had already taken two lat shots, so it was extremely low. So that long range HMG shot must have just done the the killing <laughs> blow. Just enough. <laughs> just enough to Let's eliminate hear that damage vehicle. models. Silly damage models. That it was just, insane. It's the window, car explodes. Brilliant. All right, I'm gonna put in a few ranging shots. Oh, Silas. We'll if, I guess uh, he's being responsible. Just calling him in rather than taking shots. Should be 10, 6, It'd be so hard not. Look at all these targets out this window. Yeah. This you see, there's too many windows to watch as infantry. Like when you're on the ground and you're securing that city and you're trying to lock down those alleys, you 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 get a little panic. There's a lot of stuff to cover. You you're looking around and you see all the windows, right? And there's very little you can do. Uh, to lock down every single building unless you go through and manually clear it and control it. We see the mortars down on the uh, <clears throat> the top of the building over here, and he's shooting in a couple of ranging shots. There are two mortars here actually, so they will be uh, they will be rapidly bombarding the site in a second here. We'll see how accurate they are. First mortar lands. Let's see where that was. If we can catch the splash in time. I got nothing on it. I didn't see it land anywhere. <clears throat> Here we go, more mortars going off. Now we talked about uh we talked about infantry pressure and mortar pressure at the same time. It's really hard to do <clears throat> too much with just uh the mortar shots alone. Oh mortar rounds coming in close. These are actually really close to the insurgents. These are really close. He is zeroed in, and I think he's going to be awaiting that infantry pressure. Um, but we'll see if U.S. is going to be able to cross this road. Oh, hey, back. oh mortars firing back into the town. All right, we are going that to was, I was thinking, that might be a benefit of having the mortar base somewhere in the city, because the insurgents aren't going to know exactly where it is. Whereas if you put it in one of those little huts out there, it's like, oh, it's... This is exactly where it is. You know they're going to be in that compound or around it. So True, but you don't necessarily put it. Need to put it in the hut. You could have let it uh, left the uh, thing in the grass or in the sand and just uh, built up a a cop right there in the middle of nowhere. Um, however, in the city now, if Silas gets bold enough, he can pick a window to try to get eyes on that mortar team, and he might be able to do some damage. Let's see where Silas is at this point as he moved. U.S. troops now taking fire from a discotheque at range. 
MRAP's gonna be screening for the for the trans. Tran gets a couple close calls. But that uh MRAP's gonna be screening for this uh trans here and they're gonna be pushing off. The whole US force is wrapping around the southwest. Silas missed his opportunity. Now he's gotta run three miles to engage. I guess he could go for the uh mortar pit. Here we go, U.S. getting out on foot, south of the city. All right, dump tubes, dump tubes. Go ahead. All right, Matt are using that mortar pressure and infantry pressure at the same time. He's going to be making a move for the cap. However, that vehicle, that trans, take an HMG fire filled with U.S. troops. If he, if that vehicle goes down, that will be a huge blow to the U.S. That will be a full infantry squad. Mortar's now coming out. I'm going to see if I can catch a cool shot of these splashing and see if these are actually able to get any insurgents in the open. These mortars are zero, so they are going to be doing a lot of damage. However, I'm scared. Come. I'm worried if they're going to be landing too far north, and they are. They are pretty damn close to on target. Though. They're close, but they're not not zeroed in enough. They need to be further south. If he can get rounds further south, that's closer. That was close. But uh, he's still not on target. We've got a whole U.S. squad in the in the open now, pinned by uh, insurgent fire. I do believe the furthest, see, uh, north, the furthest north infantry squad is undetected at this point. They're sneaking along the river, and I think they're unknown. Go. No one's Mortar's getting closer. And that infantry and mortar pressure is going to start taking its toll on the insurgents. Perfect timing on both the assault and the mortars. It's going to be really... Locking up where uh, the insurgents are going to be allowed to watch from. That mortar landing right on top of the building they're taking cover from. Better mortars. Mortars are now zeroed on the south. These are now these mortars are deadly. These mortars hey, landing Cutter. right in the door frame. Get someone standing right in the door frame. These mortars are doing absolutely devastating amount of damage now that they're zeroed. Check out the technical. Excellent mortar fire now. These mortars are now zeroed properly. U.S. infantry pushing up on the south. Throwing smokes from the uh, the west. Yep. The mortars are Sounds like the mortars are almost out of ammo. A good amount of insurgents now down. All right, that northern squad uh, got detected here. We smoked it out. There's only yeah. a few yeah. INS on the cap itself now. Nice Dishka firing through the smoke here. Oh, takes out one. Takes out. Ooh, yeah, that Dishka, Dishka, and a fuck. <laughs> Dishka and an infantry squad on the north here are gonna be tying up this north, uh, this side flank along the river. It's gonna be really hard for us to advance. Yeah, U.S. tried to push over this hill. They've got GLs, they've got laws, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. Uh, insurgents now pushed off this corner as, after the fa uh, sandbags get hit with fragmentation. But U.S. now losing momentum with those mortars down. They don't have the pressure to push in. You need to be able to use that mortar pressure to get your infantry into the cap zone. And it looks like they've lost all steam. They're kind of hunkered down now, pinned down. Uh, we've got five, six squad. U.S. soldiers behind the, the bridge. Yeah, the southern squad needs to move up and use those uh, vegetation pits as cover. You yeah, there's good low walls. Pit. Yeah, wow. you could be bounding up pit to pit, but it looks like they are suppressed by overwhelming Dishka fire. I think the Dishka actually goes down. That technical just pops due to uh, either small arms or a law shot, and that will take some pressure off of the U.S. Let's see if they're able to bound northbound through these fields. It does like they are making some form of progress, but heavy casualties on the U.S. side. That southern squad reduced to maybe six people. And this U.S. squad on the north still can't move. Oh. This this RPK locking down the, the lower side of the bridge, <laughs> you have an AR locking down that angle. There's no way U.S. is going to be able to push through it without smoke. These infantrymen now pushing back, That's knowing that they back. cannot make a break on this north. They're going to be reevaluating and trying to get a different angle because there's zero cover while pushing off, off that bridge. This uh, team to the south losing some momentum. They're kind of pinned down at the moment as well. Uh, probing, trying to find a safe way in. 
Um, they don't really have many options at this point. Yeah, they don't really have too many options. Guy and squad lead kit here, so I'm gonna round the guys up and we're gonna push into village. Copy that. We're gonna go from the other direction. There's a techie over here near us, but we're gonna bypass it. Those guys are coming now. The insurgents are coming under the bridge. Yeah, insurgents pushing in right now. They're sensing weakness. U.S. now regrouping along that south wall where there's sufficient cover. HMG shots are going to keep them pinned, though. They are extremely suppressed by this Dishka. Where is this Dishka? It's behind some barrels. Kind of uh, there's a Dishka right, right here, I see. There's multiple Dishkas looking south. Oh, here's another one. Yep, behind some barrels. It's going to be locking down that shift. Uh, from right to left. And great emplacements by the insurgents with these dishkas. These dishkas actually proving to be devastating. Mortars now coming out from the insurgents. And they're going to be firing on that south here. We're going to see if they are able to get any shots down. We have a whole, we have a whole U.S. squad now pinned behind this low wall because of this dishka. And then mortars now, they're going to get fixed and then, uh, Zeroed in by the mortars. This is a very dangerous place to be right now. Mortars landing here. Oh, off target, but close. If he zeroes it in any closer, he's gonna be almost right on top of them in a minute here. Is anyone left on command? Who's a left down there? I see no names. Zabari might be a squad lead. Is he a squad lead at this point? Nope. I have a we do have that uh, very little uh, communication going on. Mm -hmm. We do have best pony here. squad, the mortar squad, now coming in from the north. They might be able to exploit the fact that all the insurgents are looking south, but uh, they're going to have to pick it up. They're pretty much 300 meters out right now. Second mortar shot goes out. Uh, they're now ranging in, trying to find where these U.S. soldiers are. Um, and then way back... We've got Silas on his bike coming to join the fight. Oh, never mind. He got off his bike. Oh, that mortar actually getting really close. He's zeroing in on these uh, troops on the right here, and he, uh, th that's fire for effect. He's going to be sending rounds over there now. But U.S. Uh, is going to try to probe this uh, river again. I'm not sure if that's the right move. They need to be pushing through these fields where there's actual cover. Along the river, they're pinned against the waterbed. And they don't have any cover near the bridge. It's extremely gonna it's gonna be extremely difficult for them to push past that on the on the on the uh bridge I'm side. I'm also fairly certain that almost all those uh infantry used all their smokes earlier. They yeah, we were running low on assets. Run out and then uh two or three of them got shot and they retreated. It's gonna be rough. Yeah, B Dog, where's the battle spacing? Yep, gotta be careful there. Pony Squad has an opportunity to turn the tide of the battle, but he needs to get in there fast and he needs to do a lot of damage and allow a lot of the U.S. soldiers to get momentum back. I'm looking here to the southwest against the river. U.S. is trying to make another push along that southwest river. This is not going to end well for them. They tried it once again, uh, once before, and now there's a, additional insurgent forces over here. One AR locking down that bridge again. There's no way they can push along this side. It's extremely dangerous to try to try uh, to try to push that side again. We're looking over here to the east. We have uh, U.S. forces, a fire team moving in, trying to get in good flank. But uh, we'll see if they're able to do enough damage in enough time. Yeah, four people and then hitting them in the back door, that could cause a lot of chaos. Let's see if the uh, insurgents are even looking that way. It looks like they might have one covering the north. Additional yep. mortars going out for the uh, insurgents. insurgents and do it's have just... Uh, 360 coverage, it looks there's like. There's a technical on the south. If that technical spots these U.S. soldiers against the bank... It's going to be devastating. Looks like he does. He's hopped up on the gun now. He's looking for targets. I think he's going to take out the vehicles first. Uh, or no, he's going to keep moving the vehicle. But if he gets into a position where he can spot these five soldiers against the bank, it's going to be devastating. But it doesn't look like he's going to spot them. U.S. soldiers trying to probe this again. They're going to go up against this AR that's locking down the bridge. We're going to see if they have any luck. There's five of them here. There's about four U.S. Uh, insurgents here with a 
with it uh, with a dishka SVG techie disables the last remaining MRAP that was abandoned because of how low its health was and he's gonna yeah. be rolling out the squad of the east just got sighted they're taking fire squad of the east RPG gets sighted fire. they take an RPG shot pet Pony's pulling back to cover now he's got ca he's got a couple wounded uh soldiers over there as well These U.S. soldiers against the bank making another push. They do have some smokes remaining. They're throwing them right now, but that essentially just broadcast their location. Insurgent forces now shifting over to adjust. And uh, yeah, this AR once again moving down to lock, lock down the bottom side of the bridge. If they have fragmentation grenades, that is one way they could open this can. But without it, they're going to be pretty much... Going against ARs already looking in a certain area. This smoke cover is decent, but it, will it be enough for them to make a maneuver? Oh, so the insurgents still have a dishka to the southeast. Yeah, and that dishka is opening up now, trying to suppress the U.S. and cause some havoc. Best pony trying to engage a dishka that's engaging him from the south. I'm not sure if that's... Oh, he was able to tag the gunner. That gunner is now down. Chappy squad actually gets pushed over in the building. He's down a man, but he is able to trade one. And the U.S. now in a very rough spot, attacking from three areas. They're trying to find any place where they can gain some kind of momentum. But they're taking casualties on all sides. Chappy finally goes down in that south building. That south e uh, southeastern group is now down. Pony squad still fully effective. And this western squad taking casualties but making some kind of progress. We're going to see how close they can get. Once again, pulling off that bridge. Realizing again that that bridge is not crossable. They are just losing troops to that uh, area. And now the SBG truck in the south might have an opportunity. These soldiers getting shot in the back as they run away. No one watching the rear cover. I can't and, uh, wait until uh, bodies stay there forever, because then the U.S. soldiers would have walked up on that bridge and saw 10 bodies and been like, nope, not, yeah, not going that, this way. This south bridge really <laughs> destroying the U.S. here. We must have lost at least like 15 people to that one bridge. And uh, now this now this SBG techie is scanning, and he's looking for infantry that he can take out. This U.S. infantry finally made it into these uh, vegetation fields, but not after losing the majority of their team. Um, insurgents now getting bold enough to push back and scan and find them. SPG techies on the move. And these U.S. soldiers now. He doesn't have any targets left. In the vegetation. Oh. Insurgents now scanning around, finding uh, finding these U.S. soldiers in the fields. That's all of them, yeah. Trying to play in hide area. and seek. There's two more on the south in the field, and then the oh, four to the up. north. Uh, best the pony north squad, squad is still trying to push in. They're coming into their own squad, their own bridge yep. here, going underneath it. These U.S. soldiers is getting mopped up here on the south. There's one left in this field on the east. We'll see if he gets spotted. SPG, SPG Techie actually rolling really close to him. We'll see if this U.S. soldier decides to engage. He is going to engage. He missed. Oh, actually, like what? Did that connect? It's on fire, so it must have. It's on fire, something. so it must have connected. But he goes <laughs> down, and all that's left of the U.S. forces and this assault group are these four to the north. Let's call these special forces at this point. They're stealthy. Yes, best Never pony mind. special forces. Wow, wow! I call them stealthy. And the river. shoots into the river. Brilliant. <laughs> now you're special special forces. Let's see what happens here. The one surgeon is is just waiting for them well, to pop. Well, you heard their that head fire out. into the river. He's like, "What was that?" He that did. Was U.S. needs turtle. to move fast now to displace. How did this guy die? Who? Guy on a roof, just body up there. I'm not sure. That was a ricochet off the river, looped around, and uh, came down from above. Pony actually y using this bed to great effect, getting in without uh, making line of sight with the insurgents. There's no one watching this north. We can see a small SVG turret here, over here looking, uh, was wa covering this bridge in case the U.S. decided to push it with a vehicle. But Pony now, in a good place he, he can get in and sneak in oh, pretty fast there's no one watching the these compounds 
There's uh, four U.S. soldiers left in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen insurgents left. So it's about a four v fifteen right here for the U.S. It's and uh, we'll see if they're going to be able to take the objective. Now, one possibility is they take the objective but suffer full casualties. That is probably the best outcome they can hope for at this point. I doubt these four U.S. soldiers are going to be able to take out the fifteen insurgents. But if they can take no out faith. the pop, <laughs> At least no they can take out the Come damage pop. No faith. Vesta's got One, some pretty good yeah. gun skills. We'll see. We'll see. Who, who, who do we have here? We have, we have Belland, Revy, Pony, and Triton. It does Triton. not look like they have a medic with them. So that is going to be pretty rough. Belland already taking a hit. I think Insurgents just spotted Pony on the roof. Yeah, I got the, oh. Oh. One down. There's one Insurgent down. Pony tagging the uh, insurgent commander over there and taking out one. He's putting fire on. But now his location has been revealed. Insurgents rotating and adjusting as necessary. We can see this eastern group hearing the sound of those shots. They're getting recalled back in and they're going to be facing north. Pony now. I think, he, I think he jumped the gun maybe a little bit too soon. And now his squad is going to get engaged oh, on from the down. west. Pony goes down. Or is that Pony? Did Pony go down? Oh. Oh, there's a second going down. And these US forces are surrounded. Ah, they're getting hit from both sides. Three down, one left. Last yeah, man one standing. left. Pony jumping the gun. Did not maintain his uh, element of surprise and uh, kind of expended it on one, one insurgent trooper. I feel like... He, he could have waited for a little bit longer before engaging. Uh, he's now in the crate. There's one insurgent coming over to scout him out. It's going to come down to this 1v1. One one. One it's got some low cover there, high cover. He he is in good that. cover. We'll see, uh, we'll see what he can do. Who is this? This is Belland. We'll see if Bellin is able to take uh, more Ooh. insurgents with him. Oh, the barrel of his gun barely sticking <laughs> out. Oh. He hears yeah, him. Here we go. Here we. Oh! oh. <laughs> that insurgent executes Bellin. All right. Thank you so much for joining us for Operation uh, Rawhide. That was round one. We're gonna take a small intermission and then roll to round two. We'll be, be spectating the opposite squad leaders in command for the U.S. as we do a team swap. Thank you so much for joining us for round one. We'll be right back in a second with round two. My name is Karma Cut. I'm the founder and director here at Squad Ups, and joined one, by one of our admins and uh, commentators, Tedish. Tedish, say that was a good, hello again. Good job, guys. Yeah, that was a great round. Good yeah, it was a great right first round to start. We'll be back again in a second here. We're also joined by Penn, the man behind the mu uh, the music, making all this mixing possible and uh, making the stream really come together. Thank you so much to Penn. We'll be right back with round two where we'll swap teams and uh, see the other commander's uh, strategy for taking the village. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be right back with round two with Operation Rawhide by squadops.gg.